it's Ms. Harris from Hamilton County Schools. Um, today we are going to take some time to continue working on uh, A Christmas Carol, Act 1. Uh, we are going to read Act 2 later this week, but today we're going to be working on Act 1, and we're going to be looking at what the dialogue tells us. But before we get started on that, I'm going to have us do a warm-up. So, um, to see if I can find it. I want this. Okay. Uh, so, Take some time to answer this question. Based on Scrooge's past experiences, do you think he should be excused for his current attitudes and behaviors? Pause me while you do that work. All right, I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say about that. Um, I, uh, I feel like it could really go either way. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to be looking at how does dialogue help to develop the characters in a uh, story. So, interestingly, in a play, it's pretty much all dialogue or um, stage direction. So when you look at it, uh, anything that is in italics and brackets is going to be stage directions, but anything that's not like my name is Jacob Marley and I am dead, that is dialogue because it's people talking. And dialogue serves several purposes. It can introduce conflicts um, or struggles between characters. It can tell us the, um, like the word patterns and word usage can tell us about a character and what they say can really tell us about a character. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at specific instances of dialogue in um, Act 1 of A Christmas Carol. We're going to think about what does it literally mean because that's the first step is to be like, literally this is what's going on. And then what can we infer and then what does that tell us about the character? So the first piece of dialogue I want us to look at is scene three paragraphs. 9 through 23. So, um, I did not mean to do that. Uh, I'm going to do on this page control F and look for the word scene to get to scene three. So, it's the fifth time <laughs> the word scene comes up. We're going to look at paragraphs 9 through 23. I am going to read this out loud to you since you guys have already read it, just to remind you of what it is. So Scrooge is talking at first, and he says, How now? What do you want of me? Much. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? In life, I was your business partner, Jacob Marley. I see. Can you sit down? I can. Do it then. I shall. You don't believe me. I don't. Why do you doubt your senses? Because every little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. There's more of gravy than of grave about you, whatever you are. Humbug, I tell you, humbug. Okay, so we got to think about the literal meaning first. So Scrooge is arguing with Marley's ghost about who he is. Scrooge blames the whole ordeal on what he ate. He's saying, you're not real, I just ate something bad. So what can we infer then? Um, why would someone blame it on something they ate? So I think Scrooge is doubtful that the ghost is real, right? He doesn't want to admit it, what he's seeing. So what does that tell us about Scrooge's character? So uh, the fact that Scrooge doesn't want to admit Marley is there tells us he could be really scared or regretful about what Marley might have to say, or he may just be super logical, right? He might just be like, I don't believe in ghosts. 
that it could go either way on this one. And I think once we read a little bit more, we kind of find out it's both, right? He doesn't want to deal with how he treated Marley, but also he's a pretty logical person. He doesn't believe in things like that. Okay, so the next piece that I want you guys to do is scene four, paragraph two. So I'm going to read that one out loud to you guys as well. So this is Marley talking. Um, and he says, from this point forth, I shall be quite visible to you, but invisible to him. He will feel my presence, nevertheless, for unless my senses fail me completely, we are, you and I, witness to the changing of a miser. That one, my partner in life, in business, and in eternity, that one, Scrooge, see him now. He endeavors to pierce the darkness with his ferret eyes. See him now. He listens for the hour. All right, so what I want you guys to do is go ahead and see if you can figure out the literal meaning of this text. Uh, pause me while you do that, and then when you come back, we'll talk about it together. Okay, so hopefully you guys realize that Marley is invisible to Scrooge, but the audience can see him. Spelled butt wrong but the audience can see him. That's literally what's happening. And he's telling the audience, Marley is telling the audience to pay attention because Scrooge is changing. I don't know if I spelled changing right. I, wow, way wrong. Okay, so um, now I want you to think about what can we infer about the meaning based on what Marley is saying, literally. Pause me while you do that. Okay, so this is Marley giving the audience instructions and information about the structure because it's getting complicated. That's what I think we can infer there. Things are getting complicated. He's saying this is important for you to know. Okay, now what can we infer about Marley? What can we infer about Scrooge? What can we infer about their relationship? Tell me about the character development. All right, so I think Marley is controlling the situation. And he is interested. Scrooge will react to that. Their relationship may have been strained as he is fine with upsetting Scrooge. He's just like, watch him. I bet he has a fun reaction. <laughs> okay, so the next one that I want you guys to do, you are going to do as, um, you're going to do this part alone. Um, I want you to find your own piece of dialogue that you think is um, interesting, that you think is, tells us about the characters, maybe has a little bit more to it than just the literal meaning. Uh, pause me while you do that. All right, if you're having trouble finding a piece of dialogue that you want to do, my suggestion would be scene five, paragraph 79. Um, so let's see. Ugh, I missed C in five. Let's see. C in five, paragraph 79 says it's Scrooge talking, and this is when he's just taking some time to uh, look at Fezziwig and that whole in debacle. Um, and he says, It isn't that, it isn't that spirit. Fezziwig had the power to make us happy or un unhappy to make our service light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. The happiness he gave is quite as great as if it cost him a fortune. Um, all right, that is your exit ticket. You don't have to do that one. You can do a different one, but if you are struggling to find a piece of important dialogue, that one I think is it. All right, um, tomorrow we are going to read the second, well, we're gonna start reading the second act of um, a Christmas Carol. I'm excited. Uh, have a great rest of your day.